Welcome to the Under the Hood Show podcast. Thank you for joining us. We have some podcast sponsors. Berkeley One Classics, your key to collector car insurance. You can find them at berkeleyclassics.com. And by car-part.com. Over 200 million recycled original equipment use parts ready to ship to you fast. And roadreadywheels.com. Replica OEM wheels at huge price savings. Use the code hoodie to save even more. Roadreadywheels.com. Thank you for subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast. We would love if you'd subscribe and rate and review us. We appreciate it. Here is the Under the Hood Show podcast. Now, let's go Under the Hood with the Nordstrom's Motor Medics. Welcome to the Under the Hood Show from the Autotempest.com studios. All the cars, one search. This is the Under the Hood Show. Russ Evans is here to answer your automotive questions. Thanks for joining us under the hood. Shannon Nordstrom is here to do the same. Welcome hoodies. Thanks for tuning in so we can help you tune up. I'm Chris Carter here to answer your calls at 866-594-4150. You guys don't have to answer this question. We don't? No. I'm just going to ask you, listening to the intro, are you guys all current on your certification? 866-594-4150. I, no, I don't know why Why I did you it. bring that up? I uh, like, are you asking me why now? Yeah, or, why would... Or why in general? Because in general, I shouldn't have. No, but, but I, as it's playing, I'm thinking I have a postcard laying on my desk to renew, and I've let it expire, my my current, my last certification. I got mine right on my phone. They I know, you, you told every Ru- month. Russ told me this. He told me this months ago, hey, get back with it. They send you new questions every month. You just go tap, tap, tap. You type and answer them, and you got all that time to text on your phone. He's made it it aware to me. So simple. I'm aware of it, and And now you bring it up. Out of the blue. You bring it up. Now I I feel guilty. It's a sign from Chris over there. Wow. Huh. That's interesting. That's how it works. Agriculture started all at the same time worldwide. Just kind of happened. (laughs) <laughs> Bader Meinhof? <laughs> Similar, yeah. I did I say so. that right? Yeah, you did. Yeah, way to you, go. Maybe because people needed to eat, right? So well, it was just worldwide. But all over the world, thousands of years ago, they all started doing the same thing at the same time, unconnected. Some That's were right. better than some were better than others <laughs> for sure. Eight six six five nine four four one five zero. Let's go to Kansas and talk to Bradley. You're on the Under the Hood Show, Bradley. What can we do for you? All right. All right. Thank you very much for your show and all that. You bet. Um, on my uh, 1986 Ford F-150, the, the standard alternator on it was 60 amp, and that's what I got now. All right, 60 amp alternator. You, you know if it'd uh, be okay to, to put a optional 70 amp on it? In that age of vehicle, 100% you can. Okay. It, with the age of the vehicle, you can't. Now, you get into some of the newer ones, you've got to match everything up because the, the the computer's expecting a certain voltage and amperage. It's all got to make sense. Uh, is that correct, Russ? But right. On these older vehicles, we did it all the time. And in, mm-hmm. in, and when back in the day when we did car stereos and everything else, you are always looking to get a little more juice to keep your battery going uh, when you'd start adding more amperage to the circuits. So in this case, he's talking about adding an alternator that produces more mm-hmm. electricity. Okay. And, and they have, in that case of alternator that goes on that truck, you can buy an alternator that fits right on there in the same size case of alternator that has a higher output, just the different windings inside of it that they use to, to get a different result. So 100% yes. There you go. Bradley, thanks very much for the call. 866 594 Let's talk to Steve. Steve, you're on the Under the Hood Show. What can we do for you? My granddaughter has a 2000 or 2002 Dodge Caravan. She says a little light comes on and says it's hot. And I've checked the radiator, transmission fluid, checked the oil. Everything's up. But she doesn't think she can hear the fans going. So how do we check to see if the fans are good? You plug a scanner into it. <laughs> That he says, no, I don't have one of those. <laughs> well, that's that's what you're going to have to have to test that. Uh, otherwise, you let it run until it gets hot enough where the fans should come on. And if they don't come on, then they're not working. But when you bring it into a shop and you ask them to test it, they plug a scanner in. They activate the fans, low speed, medium, high speed, whatever there is for settings. And they see if they run. 
If they don't run, then they get out the wiring diagram and they start looking. They check fuses to the fans, make sure they have power. They check the relays to make sure the relays work. They'll In this case, we're out. talking about the fans at the front of the engine, right? Right, okay. correct. And they'll pull relays out and jumper across, see if they can get the fans to run, see if it's the computer that doesn't have control of the fans or if the the relays won't operate the fans when they're activated. You know, if they jumper them and they don't run, that it's it's very common on those vehicles for the fans to fail. We sell lots of fan assemblies for those and we put them in and then they work again. But they can they can quit. You can lose uh, you know one or both whatever you've got for a number of fans on on a vehicle. Do they always run in tandem two mm-hmm. at a time? Okay. No, different ones run differently. It depends on the on the vehicle and the models and the setups. Some even the same model could have different fan setups on it, depending on what it was equipped with. But they'll run just one. They'll run two. They'll run low speed, high speed. Some vehicles always run the pair together at, at variable speeds all the way up. Some don't have a variable speed. They have uh, not an infinitely a variable with a pulse width modulated. They have on, off, and low, medium, high, and use resistors to slow them down. Uh, depending on whether the AC, if the AC is on, on a warm day, you turn the AC on. Within a few seconds, the the fans should both be both be running. If that's not happening, do not run that air conditioning system. I have so many people that tell me, <laughs> "Yeah, my Text car you yesterday. Yeah, my car overheats <laughs> a little bit when it's sitting idling, and the air doesn't work when I'm at a stoplight. But then once I get going again, it works fine. So I've been using it that way for a while. Well, surprise! You're probably going to be spending fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars to replace your entire air conditioning system. If you've been driving it that way because you think it's okay to sit at a stoplight when it's not working, but down the road you're fine. Don't look at me. It's overheating the air conditioning <laughs> system. No, you asked. I know. Because you thought. You said, I've been listening to this show before. <laughs> yeah. If you if you wouldn't have mentioned the fact that you haven't heard the fans run, we also would want to check to make sure you're getting a true signal that you don't have a sensor bat or something that's giving you a false hot signal. Does the vehicle seem like it's hot when that light comes on? I haven't gone out with her. Uh, she always pulls into my driveway and says, the light came on. But I know it's, as you've been talking about air conditioning, uh, she runs the air conditioning constantly. And, and I know they spend too much time sitting in the parking lot or in the stuff, friends, and not going any place. They will overheat. If you're sitting in a parking lot and it's a, a warm day, like it's been in most of the country where it's around 90, they're not meant to be sitting and idling. Cars that are brand new and still very efficient, they've got a very clean block inside, a brand new radiator that's very clean, everything's at 100% on a warm day, can usually work much better and much longer through idle periods than ones that are old. Once a vehicle is three or four years old, it loses 10 to 30% of its cooling efficiency because the radiator is starting to get scale built up in it, just a very small amount. The iron in the block, the aluminum in the block, that's starting to get some scale in it. The coolant's getting older. It's picking up metals as it travels through the system, and it's losing efficiency. It's going to run hotter. You're getting bugs that are jammed in the grill and stuff, you know, in the fins. They're bent over. Yeah, you can ruin an engine if you let it sit and idle. You shouldn't be idling more than just your stop signs. If you if you pull in and you're waiting in school to pick up the kids, sitting there for a half hour could overheat a vehicle very easily. Be very aware on those vans. We sell a lot of fans for the vans on those caravans, but not only electrically we see some problems, but the hub center wears out of them and the blade comes apart and you won't get the fan action because it can't turn the fan. And so you definitely got to get that checked out. If that heat light's coming on, you can't ignore it with the temperature. Program. You're going to kill the air conditioner. It's very expensive repair, even though the vehicle's not very expensive and you're going to kill the engine. And so if it's truly getting hot, this is an immediate problem that needs to be fixed. That's why it's a red light. Steve, thanks very much for the call. 866-594-4150. From the Autotempest.com studios, all the cars, one search. You're listening to the End of the Hood Show. Let's talk to Tim. You're on the End of the Hood Show. Tim, what can we do for you? Yeah, see, um, last week about a 2018 Dodge Ram Bighorn half ton. And the deal is the front grill, the Ram part, when you turn on the park lights, it actually lights up red. Fun. And I go to I, I go to shut you know turn it to off and they go on. Then when I turn my light switch back to like on the lights at the auto, it stays wet. I can't get that to go off. 
You don't like it? <laughs> well, I like it, but I think it's still illegal to drive around, you know, with that on the, on the state highways and stuff. <laughs> yeah, the red ones, the, the manufacturers, there's a couple of them I've seen that they put them on, like factory, but they were they were white on the front. They they weren't red. If you've got a red one up there, it's it's not a it's not a factory one. It's an it's an aftermarket one. I don't know how they. I have no idea how they wired that thing. <laughs> You're just gonna have to find out how it's wired and put a switch on it. How many miles are on the truck? Twenty five thousand. And it's a. I'm guessing it's a beautiful truck. If somebody's put those extra accents on it and stuff. I'm not sure if it's factory, and I've looked in the owner's manual, and don't, don't say nothing about that lighting up or anything, so I have no idea. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking it's factory. I, I don't think it not is either. Not if it's red. It's Not if it's red, it shouldn't be. Because is, they, is the truck got any sort of special package on it? I mean, is it is it a Rebel, or is it a, is there anything special about the truck, no. or is it like an SLT, Laramie, or that sort of a thing? No. Yeah. It's a big horn. Big horn, it's, okay. Um, it's pretty loaded. And I didn't come with the bill sheet, and I kind of looked up the VIN number, and there's it says it's got two packages, and I didn't look up the two packages it's got, though. Yeah, My, Our best guess is that is not factory. No, red red lights on the front of a motor vehicle in the United States are against federal motor vehicle law, and none of the manufacturers would would break that they would be in they would be in violation they'd be in trouble so it, it's not unusual for people to add LED accent lights to their vehicles truck. Uh, it's not unusual at all we see are you know people doing it all the time to the underglow on the sides wheel wells behind the wheels we had a a, a, a group that we worked with that gave Russ some lights that are in the wheels on it on the under the hood showed Camaro some accent lighting Oracle lighting sells all those I tricks. couldn't think of their name. That's why I was pointing at you. I was, uh, Tron had a lot of lights on. I was watching your car one time and I thought, how do they make the lights that turn with the wheel without getting tangled up? And then I, it took me about a month to go, oh, the wheels, the lights don't turn. They just light up and the wheels turn and it yeah. looks, yeah. You've got to, you've got to make sure that when you're putting <laughs> accent lights on like that, that they, well, there's a lot of city ordinances on them. We used to do them all the time back at the stereo shop. We'd put undercar lights on. And they were fine when we were putting them on for about three years. We had no problems. But then people started putting their own on, and they had a law that said you could not see the bulbs from the side of the vehicle. Okay. You could only see the glow, indirect lighting, they called it. So mm-hmm. you could have green, you could have purple, blue, as long as they didn't flash, and as long as they were indirect, so you could just see the glow under the car like you do in some of the movies. They were fine. But then people started hanging their own lights. You could see the tubes. They were putting blue and red, and th- and they would start flashing with the music. And what do you see? If you see a car with blue neon lights blinking to the music underneath down the road, you think it's a police car. Mm-hmm. So they immediately threw out an ordinance and said no lights. Well, they couldn't ban all of them, but they did follow the rules strictly for the federal laws, you know, amber on the sides, Rear of the rear axle, red or amber. Front of the front axle, amber or white. You know things like that. So in Tim's case, what's the what's the fix here? You well, got to find the wire, cut it, okay. put a switch in it to turn it on and off when you want to turn it on and off. So when you're in a parking lot, you can have it on. Is there a chance that if the if it's integrated that it's programmable? But if it, it's staying on, it's probably it's, not in the program of the vehicle, right? Right. And if it's aftermarket, it might be one that has a wireless Bluetooth control. I, if you get oh, on Google, sure. you Google that r- illuminated Ram grill emblem, you're going to find it. And a lot of them do have a little Bluetooth remote control. Interesting. You can turn them on just like we do with the LEDs in the studio. You turn them on and you can select the color and all that stuff. I'm guessing it's probably got one of those and that's why it's staying on. Tim, thanks very much for the call. 866-594-4150. I thought of this last week when we talked about something. Did cars ever have like nav lights, like boats, green on one side, red on the other? The, uh, I was uh, actually thinking about your truck, wondering if the amphi car. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I suppose. If it's got a boat, and then it has to have a boat license and a car license on that. I've known a couple people that have had those over the years. They've gotten tickets from like the game fishing park because they drove them into the lake. They're pretty noticeable, too. I bet if you drive one into a lake, 
everybody around comes and looks at it, including the DNR. The last, you think the last thing would be, where's your lights? I mean, come on. No. I'm sitting there watching this car. Yeah. Not, I know. They're not worried about the lights. I'm watching much. this thing drive out there. That is so cool. Like, can we just watch this? Yeah. We have to give them a ticket. <laughs> right? I mean, come on. No, it's the registrations yeah. that they Yeah, that they whatever. Just, I mean, if there's a car it's in the water, let them drive it. <laughs> <laughs> give me a ride. Let's talk to Mike. <laughs> Mike, you're on the end of the hood show. What can we do for you? Thanks for taking my call. What I have is I have a, a, a friend who has a 2017 Hyundai Tucson. It's got 80,000 miles on it. Uh, she's the second owner, and she changes the oil eh, between three and 4,000 miles, uh, five, 5W30, like a synthetic, and uh, she does a lot of road miles. Anyway, I noticed the other day when I was talking to her that um, her, her, her car, the, the oil doesn't seem to stay up there at good levels. And what I mean by that, when I checked the oil, it was down like a quart and a half or so. And the question I pose to you is, um, do you know of any problems with it? It's a little four-cylinder, great vehicle, runs out good, doesn't have any knocks or anything like that. But um, is there any, any concerns there? Uh, I mean, if you don't have oil, <laughs> granted, you're going to have a problem. But is there anything out there that you guys know of that would uh, help mitigate this? Or are we looking at maybe a new motor, a new inch, uh, rebuild questions, you know, something like that? Uh, just a quick follow-up on your description of the vehicle. Turbocharged vehicle? Because they made some turbos in those. No. Just a standard, normally aspirated. No. Just, fuel. A, just a standard, yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing fancy in that respect. But it runs out great. All right, and and we're changing oil at three thousand miles about, and we're having and we're three to, short, three short. to four thousand, yeah, three to four thousand miles, and she does a lot of road miles. So I mean, you're not talking in town driving; we're talking primarily out and out on the road. And she does drive it. I mean, so she'll do seventy, eighty miles an hour. So I don't know what the manufacturer would tell you, but I would say that's not normal. So I would agree. Um, you know, to have a little bit gone, a eighth of a quart gone, or something. But these new vehicles should not burn oil. Um, and yeah. I say new, you said it's quite low mileage, correct? Yeah, it's got 80,000 on it. And I checked underneath the car. It doesn't seem to have anything there. The head and stuff, of course, I'm not a, I'm not a mechanic either, but I checked around to see if there's any leaks around the head and, and stuff like that. Everything seems to be tight. So I'm going to make a speculation that it's internal. Yeah. It, it could be something with the, with the ventilation system for the crankcase. They've had some issues on a few cars with those. You need to inspect that first. Yeah, make sure that's working like okay. it's properly. But if it is, um, you know, it, it, I'd like to know too, did it do this since the car was brand new? Because some of these, they had a requirement. They said, and a lot of people don't really go into detail unless the dealership tells you when you buy the car. But if you buy a brand new car, we've had some customers take them. They get 500 miles on them, and they think, I better change the oil because there's 500 miles, and they switch to a fully synthetic so they can get started right away with a fully synthetic 100% oil in there, and the engine never breaks in. It's meant to go right. you know, seven to 10,000 miles on the oil. They put in it right away. That's why they tell you the first oil change on a lot of those at 10,000. People don't understand why it's so long, and then after that, it goes lower. Well, that's to break it in, so that can be – an issue where the rings just never seated in the, in the in the engine, so it never never worked. It could have had an issue since it was new. We've had a few of those engines that had oil burning problems, and they had to be replaced. If you're burning through a half a quart or a quart, let's say a quart every three thousand miles, you're going to contaminate the catalytic converter eventually. It's going to give you a check engine light for the non efficiency of it, and then it's going to start restricting the exhaust and that'll have to be replaced with the engine but right right now before i go too far i would probably be looking at the the emission system on that make sure that the ventilation system is working properly does that help you out there mike okay check the pcv yeah, system. I'm still there yeah, yeah check the pcv system and if you find that to be in good shape then don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call your hyundai dealer and just Ask them, here's my VIN number. Might I happen to be part of any sort of a campaign? Because there are, Hyundais and Kias have gotten so much better over the years. We've talked about this a lot, but there are still some engine issues across certain um, certain lines of their of their product line. We've seen some engine issues. So you might want to check. Just don't ignore it. If you bought a new car and you change the oil too soon to go with the good oil to make your car last and you wrecked it, that has to be a kind of disappointment and anger i wouldn't want to wouldn't want to feel we've had people that in the last six months we've had at least three customers uh come to us because they bought an engine 
It's been in there nine months to a year, and their engine blew up. And we look and we find we found anywhere from 10,000 miles to 17,000 miles on the oil change. They never changed the oil well, since they different. put it in. That's, that's different than Th- doing you, it too soon. And, but how would you feel? It's like mistake. I just spent this money to get something Apparently fixed. Apparently they just and- want to be blaming somebody because they should have <laughs> felt to change their oil. You're listening to the Under the Hood Show. We'll be back in just a minute. The Under the Hood Show podcast is brought to you exclusively by Berkeley One Classics. Berkeley Classics is now Berkeley One Classics. RoadReadyWheels.com and by Car-Parts.com. If you want to take part in the show, you can call us every Thursday morning from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central at the number we give on the show, 866-594-4150. And thanks for listening to the Under the Hood Show podcast. Let's talk wheels. The ones from our partner, Road Ready Wheels. We want to offer you only the best available when we recommend a partner on Under the Hood and Road Ready Wheels is one of those. With an average 4.8 rating on both Google and Amazon and a 99.9 on eBay, that says a lot. You may have a vehicle with wheels that leak air or are just plain ugly from years of road hazards eating away the finish, or maybe you want to upgrade to the premium alloy look from the steel wheels you have now. Road Ready Wheels has what you need. You can also get steel wheel replacements. They stock over 40,000 wheels, so they're ready for quick shipment with free returns and shipping. Alloy factory wheels at the dealership are expensive, but Road Ready Wheels is ready to save you money. Compare a Toyota Corolla wheel at $389 dealership cost to $127.95 from Road Ready Wheels. That's huge. Get 10% off when you use the code HOODIE. Dealers, we haven't forgotten about you. Special pricing for large quantities, electronic data feed, and online purchasing portal and more is waiting for you. Find out more and order yours today at RoadReadyWheels.com. If you need parts, whether it be for a brand new car or going back about 20 years, it doesn't matter. Check out Car-Part.com. It's fast and it's easy. Over 200 million parts strong all across North America. Over 4,000 recyclers to choose from, giving you the largest selection available. Whether it's an engine, transmission, doors, seats, or wheels, You can find them on car-part.com. We even let you know what parts from other models and years fit your car. Many recyclers supply pictures of their parts, too. We even have a mobile app. Search U.S. and Canada or buy from your local independent recycler. Whichever you choose, buying recycled is good for the environment and good for your wallet. If you're a repair shop, there is a professional version available for you at no charge. That's car-part.com. Car-part.com. Check it out today. When I got my first specialty car, I called up my agent and had it put under my regular auto policy and had very minimal coverage, even dropping coverage in the storage months to keep the cost down. Well, that was before I met the professionals at Berkeley One Classics. I'm Russ Evans, host of Under the Hood with Shannon Nordstrom and Chris Carter. Berkeley One Classics insured me with an agreed value policy. That means that if you suffer a loss, there's no haggle over what the value of your vehicle is. They also showed me that I could insure my vehicle for what it was really worth and keep my coverage year-round and still save money. I didn't know that my homeowner's policy didn't cover my car when it was stored in my garage without coverage. Berkeley One Classics insures a wide range of vehicles from sports cars and rare exotic cars to antique vehicles, including cars, trucks, tractors, and motorcycles. Berkeley One Classics makes it easy to get a quote. Just visit them on the web at berkeleyclassics.com and use their online quote tool or give them a call. Welcome back, everybody. It's time to get back under the hood with the Motor Medics. 866-594-4150 from the autotempest.com studios. All the cars, one search. This is the Under the Hood Show. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you like us on Facebook and you join the Hoodie Fan Club at underthehoodshow.com, you could win a hoodie. Like Mary Setch, who listens to us on KMAS in Shelton, Washington. Congratulations from all of us under the hood and our friends over at Universal Technical Institute. They're going to get you trained to be the best technician you can be, whether that's a collision repair technician, an automotive technician, a welder, welding technician, motorcycle technician, personal watercraft technician. There's jobs available right now and you should be properly trained so you can get the best pay available right now. UTI.edu. It seems like being a watercraft technician would be a good gig because they always need something. 
They do, but I don't know what they, I don't know if they get paid. Yeah. But usually watercraft guys, like in our era, they're watercraft guys and they're snowmobile guys and they're motorcycle guys. Okay. And the pay for the motorcycle guys is not bad. Uh, well, I guess if I'm looking at it, I don't know what the exact number is, but if I'm looking at it and I see that their labor rate is $165 an hour, an automotive rate in the same area is $145 an hour, that technician better be getting paid a, at least the same as the mm-hmm. automotive guy because if they're not, you know, there's some other places in the area that do, let's just say, service work and their technicians, yeah, they charge, they're charge they charging 165 bucks an hour, but their technicians are making like half of what our techs would. Mm, something's, something's you not You still have right to there. put the engine in the barrel in your garage to run it, and that's what my neighbor used you to gotta do. You got to have some, some water muffs. I have yeah. not put an engine in a barrel in a very <laughs> long time like that. I've got water connections for stuff, but and I the, can. And I can those remember. engines are getting way better too. It's that 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 one hasn't stayed the same either. That that's advanced quite yeah. a bit right now. Though I'm sorry, Russ. I talked the uh, um, just down at the river here recently, and boy, the people waiting like every other thing for marine engines right mm-hmm. now is just like. You just name it. Something you're waiting for. They're they're waiting for them. <laughs> Yesterday, I, a couple of the the industries, uh, one was bicycles, and the other one was um, in appliances. Because I've been I've been waiting forever for an appliance. Uh, they're they I were think both you're have to throw that cheese away. I don't yeah. think it's going to last. <laughs> they they both said that they had updates from their uh, manufacturers saying that they're if something doesn't make it worse, they're anticipating the catch up date. The end of 2018 no. to be caught up 20. with all the no, back orders. They're going uh, 2028. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there we're going back in time. Yeah, 2028 is the estimated catch-up day to be caught up with all the products they need to get shipped out and the new stuff. Problem is, like right now, I'm I'm thinking I'm going to go get a a refund for one I've been waiting on for so long because I'm going to get the last year's model, which I bought as a new model. When I get it, I waited for a dishwasher almost a year, and when I got it, it was the previous year's model. So then what do you do? It's a kind of a tricky situation. Car parts, we're running into a lot of stuff where it's... First world problems. That Well, <laughs> we ordered a camshaft. We found, we talk about the Dodge Caravans and how many, and the Promasters with that 3.6 engine and how many camshaft issues there are. Well, guess what? we go to order a camshaft and they say, Oh yeah, we've got like 43 on order of each side and take an exhaust. We're like, Whew. Was that the two, four you're talking about? No, the six cylinder. So okay. Like, so you're having issues with these. Oh yeah. It's like, well, when can we get one? Oh, it could be a couple months. All right. We order it. First one it comes in wrong. Well, you got to wait again. Next one came in. We opened the box. Somebody had dropped the box. It was damaged. Well, okay, it's damaged. When do we get another one? Oh, you're not special. You're, you're, back, at you're the, back at the beginning uh, of the end, list. Yeah. So you wait, and the poor customer has to wait as well. And other things we've ordered, simple stuff. You know, you go to order brakes for a car or struts, and they're like, eh, yeah, we're, we can't get those. But usually with struts, they're in bad shape. You can get by a little bit and wait. But it, it surprises me how many people... They've just rolled over and taken whatever they're given, and they just say, oh, I've got to wait six months for that part. Okay. It's just horrible. 866-594-4150. Let's go to Wyoming and talk to John. You're on the Under the Hood Show. John, what can we do for you? I was calling about uh, the the oil filters on uh, Rail Mines, a 2020 Toyota Sienna. And the oil filter has a canister with a a drain plug in it, and <laughs> it's just like they stepped back 50 years <laughs> to put this in. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a 2012 Tacoma, and it had a nice can of spin-on oil filter right up under the hood. Real easy to get to, real easy to change. And then this new Sienna is like my... 1960 348 Chevy engine filter, only worse. <laughs> anyway, 
The, is there an adapter? They used to make an adapter for those Chevys to convert those filters over to a spin-on. There is not on that. And you're going to see probably nearly every engine manufactured as you go into the future from then on going to a spin-on or a cartridge filter instead of a spin-on with just a cap um, until they become all electric someday. So, I mean, it might be 20, 30 years, who knows, but you're going to see that. And the reason for it is, 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 well, twofold. One, it prevents leaks. You can't double gasket it and have a leak. And two, recycling. It is extremely hard to recycle a steel can full of cardboard and dirty oil. It's very easy to recycle a piece of biodegradable cardboard covered in oil. That's why they're going to this. And that, and that also lends me on to the next subject of the same thing. You know, if you have one of these vehicles and you've got any oil filter, any car or truck that takes an oil filter, the oil filters are only designed to last so long because they are made out of a biodegradable, basically, cardboard to break down in the environment. It may take a while, but if you're – a lot of people are driving less miles right now. COVID, they stayed at home and didn't drive. So they say, well, I only put – 300 miles on my car last year, so I didn't change the car in the whole year. I've had a couple cars come in that the oil filters fell apart and started clogging things. So you've got to uh, replace the, the the oil filters more often. But, yeah, that's what's going on. Time element is important. Yes, for sure. Okay. Uh, how do you recycle one of these elements, I guess? <laughs> You take it to a, where if you're changing your oil, you can bring those oil filters in. Like where we're at, you can bring it to us if you're if you're changing your oil. If you're at uh, you know changing it in South Carolina or Florida or Texas, you bring it in wherever they take recycled oil. They typically will take old oil filters as as well to be crushed and recycled. I find that if I just ask Shannon in the right at the right time, you'll just take it. Well, sometimes if I get if I don't time it right, but most of the time you'll just go, oh, yeah, I can take that. I'll just put it right here. Now, we have a machine at that where, you know, <laughs> those oil filters get squashed here at Nordstrom's Auto Recycling, and then they get put in the in the recycle. I mean, they're that's what they do. Some states require, I want to say I'm positive Colorado and Michigan are both two of them in New York and New Jersey. But I'm I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure they require that you have so Snap On or not Snap On Snap On bought Safety Clean. Is that right? Mm, I think I'm, not the gonna, same. I'm not going to say that for oh. sure. Anyway, Safety Clean is a company that goes around and picks up um, environmental wastes. Yes, well, they're doing oil filters too. Okay, they'll pick up old oil filters. They uh, do shop rags in some states. They do chemicals like parts washers and brake cleaners and stuff. It all has to be reclaimed. You can't throw oil filters in the garbage. Uh, pretty much any state has got some kind of law against it, but there's a lot of people that still at home. They just take them off and they throw them in the garbage, but there's a lot of it's oil. It's quite amazing. We've, we've got an Oberg oil crusher and we can put four, six, eight filters in there at once, depending on what size they are. And you put it in, close the door, and we've got a, a bung right on the bottom of it that drains right into one of our oil antifreeze separator receptacles. And when you squish, squish that baby down, we should put a video of that on our... I was on our, just going to say, let's our, get a video of that after we'll, the show. For the YouTube, we'll go <laughs> down there and we'll squish a bunch of them. But you get a lot of oil out. I bet, yeah. It's, we send them all up over here from our shop up in town to be done because our machine, we still have it, but it's an old green machine and the front's open. You put a filter in it and when you squish it, well, sometimes it's like, trying to squash a tomato on your counter. You never know where it's going or the ketchup packet. It sometimes would just come right out the front and pff, all over you. Called the Gallagher machine. Yeah, it's supposed no, it's just to. just one of those things on the wall, like the recycling, where you pull it down. Yeah, yeah. The hammer. <laughs> yeah. Gallagher. I haven't seen a Gallagher show in a long time. John, thanks very much for the call. 866-594-4150. From the Autotempest.com studios, all the cars one search. This is the Under the Hood Show. The Autotempest.com has been getting a workout at my house. Every time Mine too. somebody says something about a car, you jump on and only to see like how much they're going for versus how much they used to go for. I bet I talk to people 
at least twice a day, my customers coming in because they're calling me. They're asking me how much is a, you know, oh, I don't want to put an engine in. It can't be. No, go to autotemps.com. Look, they're putting it on there like, well, I don't know. I'm sure they're cheaper. No, look, I'm telling you, all the cars are on one search. So you can just find everything in one place. And it shows you. And they're like, I can't believe my car is worth that much. It's like a 19, you know, 98 Buick LeSabre. There's no way it's, yep, it's it's crazy. I read an article recently and I, God, I wanted to remember the numbers so much. They they listed the top 10 highest changes in resale value and the ones that had changed the least. But even the ones like at the, the bottom 10 models and what they did was they did, and they it was extensive. They did all of the sales in two, 2019 or the, the month of 2019 that they were comparing it to, to 2020 or in 2021. And it was, as you can imagine, crazily higher. The average price of used cars had jumped. Well, the, the lowest one was probably 10 to 15% and the highest ones were probably 60%. Right? Yes. The, the lowest was about 7% and the highest was about, uh, one of them was, I, I thought 43%. Yeah, there's been some amazing. Things there's happening. still some, that and there's one. Yours, yours was on the list as one of the highest the trucks? changes. No, the Camaro. Oh in yeah, the change Camaros yeah. are up, and even even my truck. I've been I've been seeing trucks like mine that are in in good shape, like mine, selling for twenty thousand bucks, which just blows me away. But really, where are you going to get a mm-hmm. Ford order one ton four wheel drive dually? That's it's crazy money. But there are some though when they come up. Toyota Avalon. The older ones, mm-hmm. I was surprised. There's people are like, nope, I don't want to buy it. It's like, but I've got a car and you don't have one, and this one's pretty decent. Nope, not not interested. And they're they're selling. They're they've only gone up like fifteen percent, which is weird. And when other ones are just crazy money, like the Honda Accord, I looked up a was a two two thousand two thousand one Honda Accord, and it was like it was like way way up. I think it was. Uh, I- God, was it in road and track? Anyway, I was going to try and I, – I was going to write myself a note, and then I thought, well, I won't forget. I'll just re- – I mean, it's Thursday. You don't forget. Uh, Chris no, doesn't no. forget. This will be easy. 866-594-4150. Let's talk to Craig. You're on the Under the Hood Show. Craig, what can we do for you? Uh, hi, guys. I just heard Russ mention a 98 Buick LeSabre mm-hmm. on the radio, and that's what I've got a question about. Oh, <laughs> um, my, yeah, my wife uh, took it out, uh, I think it was Tuesday, uh, went uptown, and it started fine, ran great. On the way home, it started to like derate like a diesel would, uh, no throttle response. Uh, she made it home. But an hour later, she went to try to start it, and it was just dead. Did it turn the over? Would engage? Yeah. Nope, not at all. You could hear the starter hit the flywheel, but it would just just kill it, just like that. Oh, too. too I mean, too. everything went dark. I wonder if the intake manifold started leaking antifreeze, and it got back into the cylinder and hydrolocked the engine. It was not, misfiring, and then it. Yes. Yeah. Check. Pull the spark plugs out. Well, that doesn't it's not easier. It's you can get the front ones pretty easy. Pull out a few spark plugs and then just bump the starter carefully and be careful. Throw a rag over it or something because you could shoot out antifreeze. See if your antifreeze is low. What would you do first, Russ? What you know? Yeah, if you if you're hitting the key and it just goes tunk and nothing, I'm probably going to pull all all six spark plugs out. They're not too hard. You can get them all out in a half hour or so. But pull them all out and then crank it over. Don't have anybody standing in front of it because it might shoot water out. But you're fine inside the car. Just crank it. If it spins over and then you go up front, you go oh, look. There's antifreeze on the ground. That's that's what's happened. I'm it's, I'm going to go back to what I said. Lay a rag or something over. It. Otherwise, it's going to shoot all over your ceiling of your garage, your garage door. But then what you need to do is replace the intake manifold. and uh, Unless there's damage. Yeah. Uh, it, it should be okay, though. And this has happened before. If she shut it off and it bled down inside the engine, if, if we're correct, this is, a, this is a strong hunch, you should be fine. But you've got to replace the intake manifold. Craig, thanks very much for the call. 866-594-4150. Let's go to Arizona and talk to Chris. You're on the End of the Hood Show. Chris, what can we do for you? 
Well, I, I've got a 2016 Ford uh, F-150 with the 3.5 EcoBoost in it and done some wood stuff to it. Uh, I pulled a 30-foot fifth wheel with it, uh, an ultralight, and uh, it would get warm on hills, you know, especially if I was pushing it hard because when Jim Bob comes up in his Dodge, I've got to show him that the 3.5 V6 <laughs> will eat that 5.7 for lunch. And uh, anyways, I kept getting an overheating problem. But since the time I listened to your show and today, I think I figured out the problem. But it was, it's, it's kind of, a, a, I had to go to some plumbing parts to make it work. Keep talking because you've got us scared <laughs> and interested. <laughs> okay. Well, it's interesting. It's interesting. But anyways, I ordered a Mitsumoto uh, aluminum radiator for it. Of course, quite a bit bigger in the factory radiator. And of course, you know, the radiator hoses and stuff that come factory, it has that plastic end on it that you just snap onto the, the, the radiator nipple. And then you push the little wire down and it holds the hose on. Not like the old style that you and I grew up with, with a hose clamp and, you know, the for sure way. Anyways, um, I, I didn't know why it was overheating. And I pulled into my driveway the other day and I see radiator sealed underneath. It's like, holy cow, all this is new. Now, I've got 138,000 miles on it. Never been in the shop other than I service the tranny. I service the oil regularly. I, I, I believe in it. But anyways, um, I could not see where it was leaking. And for the heck of it, I just grabbed the radiator hose and kind of wiggled it. And that housing, that plastic housing that snaps onto the radiator nipple, uh, you know, that's what, an inch and a half or so, inch and a quarter. It sprayed fluid out because it was still a little warm. And uh, I, I think that was the problem. But what I did, as a matter of fact, I know that was the problem. But I could not, I couldn't trust just going and getting a PVC 90 and putting some, some thread in nipples on it and do that. Because, of course, oh, this will run, run 210, 220. I don't think PVC will hold that kind of pressure. So what I did is I bought, bought a radiator hose. And I went and got a galvanized 90 with two nipples and created that as my 90 and used hose clamps with a little piece of uh, radiator hose now that clamps over the, uh, the new Mitsumoto uh, nipple off the radiator. And I, uh, just to test it out, I hooked the fifth wheel up and took it up one of our hills up here. And it's a long stretch. I don't know if you guys know what, uh, what Salt River Canyon is, but it's coming up quite a grade. And never got into even the middle. It stayed right where it was. All right. We're going to try not to jump on you with both feet here, but. Wait, wait let's, before we go there for how many miles are on the truck? 138,000, he said, I think. 138? 138,000. And you've had it since it was yep. new? Had it brand new. And you've been pulling with it like that the whole time? The whole, well, no, no. I, I didn't put that, that, mo, that Mitsumoto radiator in it until the last time. Uh, we did a big trip up to uh, Montana, uh, the Dakotas, Rushmore, and stuff like that. And every time I'd get on a hill, matter of fact, it'd get so warm, it put me into a limp mode and then reduce my speed. But what Russ was asking is, though, had you pulled with the truck since it was new? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's quite amazing. And it hasn't exploded. I am, <laughs> I am kind of shocked and amazed all at the same time because we, we see – Tons and tons and tons of these things come in, and when they're subject to that much pulling, where they're showing, they usually they're usually blowing up without showing that kind of signs of overheating. But if you got it so hot that it's it's going into limp mode and it's still survived, well, that's that's awesome. How, how I, I, want, I do want to back up just a little bit here. This camper you said was forty, how thirty, long, 30 foot? How much does 30, it weigh? Thirty foot. It's uh, dry weight is about eighty nine hundred. And, uh, of course, once, once we get our gear in it, I'm retired, uh, but we, uh, we, we travel every summer. My wife's still teaching, but uh, loaded, I'm about 10000 But this one I ordered with the HO35, so it's, it's not the 395 horse. It's the, well, what yeah. they did to it, by the time I'm done, I'm about 500 horse. Yeah, and then, the, uh, the, the, that's great. Tow package, too? Yeah, what's the tow package in it? What is this? What's tow, your tow package? 12,200 12, towing capacity. So you've got the 410 gears in it? Yes, I do. There yes, you I go. Do. That's So that's something right there. I'm glad you called because that. <laughs> you, so, I wish everyone could see your guy's body language. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> so far, everyone that's called us and said, 
my EcoBoost blew up and I'm on my second or third or fourth engine and everybody that's coming to our shop that's had one blown up has not had the towing package. And we said, look, you can't look at the ad on TV where it says it'll do over 11,000 pounds with your 355 geared truck that's made to tow 8,000 pounds. Because Shannon and I right off thought, oh boy, he's got a 30 foot trailer. How is he, how is he not blown that thing up? So the tow package is a huge, he is, but he's right on the limit of that. I mean, that yeah, towing probably pretty close. So as long as he keeps it cool and he's got the tow, the right gears in it, he's because what we run into isn't so much engine temperature issues is the, the you start building up that kind of heat in the tur- turbos and the back heat that gets into the cylinders and then eventually into the block is really hard on them. And lugging I, it. But you sound like you're on top of this thing and you're watching it. But boy, if you've gotten hot enough to get into limp mode, I, I'm concerned. I I wouldn't do what you're doing, but you're you're doing good. I like that it starts to get hot when he tries to prove it to other people. That I it know. Can do. <laughs> That's and, and he's got I'm the trucks with you on that one. He's Chris. got trucks that he's trying to compete with that are going by with what are what's their towing capacity? When the trucks pass me, I don't try to prove anything because I can't. I just slow down and they go. I wonder how fast that truck goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what did you have to say? We were just, well, I just talking. thought it was kind. You know, we our mm-hmm. our streamers. Yeah, I see somebody made a commercial on TV about a streamer, and the guy's got fishing gear on. <laughs> you know, I made a bad streamer joke one time. Somebody made a commercial about one, one of our hoodies. It's on YouTube. One time. Oh. Uh, Kip Paseo, I think, is what it is. But I, I was accidentally just trolling YouTube, you know, and I thought, I went, hoodies? What's going on there? And I look, and it's got a picture of one of our hoodies. And he says, yeah, I got this. And he goes, this is... This is good. And he says it's it's not cheap. It's it's a good. It was our hoodie. Yeah, he goes it's good nice. quality. I've been using it. He goes I'm here in Miami, and he goes of course I can't wear it right now because it's super hot. But okay, I'm looking forward to when it's cooling off a little bit, and I need that hoodie. We've been to Miami and needed hoodies. You know it's, but yeah, he went through it. We could have used hoodies at the pool the one day. <laughs> yeah, well we could have. Yeah, it was it was cold, but I was that was nice. It was very nice of him. To They're do not that. good to swim in though. Well, no, they weigh you down. That, that, hoodie, tried yeah. that hoodie part gets a little bit heavy. Does it? Yeah. It's like a <laughs> I think so. Okay, so hoodies. Chris and I are both Vikings fans, and, mm-hmm. you know, and they're they were advertising something on their Twitter feed about some special hoodie they're doing this year. Is there like a is there like a luxury brand of hoodies? The oh. ones we have. Well, ours uh-huh. are, but I mean, is there a company that makes like a deluxe hoodie? Because they were touting. I, I was. I didn't, Gilden makes. That. No, this is a. Different name than Gilden. I would have got that one. Because the ones we have, I have never seen anything better quality than that. If you're just talking about an, one, even without our letters on it, just the actual material itself. Because most every hoodie or shirt I've ever got from a promotional thing, and maybe you too, Chris, they're just they're just very cheap. They're not the stu- a lot of the stuff you buy for TV shows that you see and things like that, or even radio shows. They're real thin and they're expensive still. I think. Uh I think the hoodie game may have changed a bit in the yeah. Uh, over yeah over your experience with hoodies. They can we, make the better ones uh, cheaper. Just, my daughter has forty different hoodies, and they're all different style. I mean, they're they're some pretty good ones. We have ones uh, that are great. They're like an Under Armour type of thing, yeah. and they're super nice, but they're not uh, elastic at all. <laughs> So I have this really nice hoodie that I can't wear anymore because I still it still fits. This I just was, can't breathe in it. Or this move. was not intended to be an attempt to sell hoodies, but no. if it works that way, it, we we're, could, we're yeah. all for it. But our, our hoodies are good. I was trying to find that article, but I can't because it was like a brand name that I, it just seemed interesting to me. Is it Maserati? They're back in the game. I heard on hoodies. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to go to Twitter here. I'm going to search Vikings. <laughs> Oh, hoodies. Dallas Cowboys hoodies. Let's see what comes up here. Um, yeah, it says retweet if you're excited to see the Minnesota Vikings hoodies by at Unrico. Let me, I'll click on that. Uh, UNRL, creating a th- athleisure, athletic I think, leisure. I think you just got took. Did I? I think you that breaks the barrier between sports and casual. That's how they get you. They, well, I, now I'm, now you I'm promoting them. Yeah, now you're going, oh, I heard they got a really good I hoodie. think ours are better, but they're making a big deal about this. Did I get sucked in? You're on Twitter. I, it's just fake. I, All the big deals They are got a really cool video showing making the hoodies. Huh. And stuff. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, they're like showing like some serious work going into these hoodies. 
Yeah, I guess. You see what I guess? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Look at the sewing machine. We need. Let's get them to. Let's. I was sucked in. <laughs> you. So, you were really sucked in. Enough that I remembered it and went yeah. back to it. Even. Yeah. Oh, so and that's why we that's why we extended the stream. Well, that wasn't why <laughs> it really wasn't. I did. I actually got put on the spot because I said, "Let's extend the stream." Yeah. I think our I think our streamers like that, <laughs> so they can see when craziness goes through our head. Well, there's a there's the test right there. So what happens now after the show's over? You ask. Well, usually Doug comes in. Sometimes he'll spill his water on the floor uh-huh. when he comes in, and then we start. I couldn't see him. I just heard the water, and I thought, yeah, there's, oh, I hope it wasn't there's a, no, there's a puddle there that he's ignoring, <laughs> yeah. but it's an easy wash carpet. So, Oh, he's stamping it in now. Yeah. So <laughs> It's just wood underneath, so it'll only rot. The, uh, <laughs> but now that we're done with the show, as far as our live versions went out on our local station to Kello Radio, mm-hmm. uh, 90, <laughs> 107.9 and AM 1320, uh, we've, we've done this live there. And Doug has captured all of the audio, and that will be captured. He's, he's chasing it around. Now, that will be made into the podcast, and it will also get made into the feed that goes up to the satellites and the FTPs for the 240, 50 radio stations mm-hmm. that use the show. And we're happy for them. Thank you. And then, what are you uh, doing? And then We're showing we, people the studio. And, okay. It, it's a little, that's like one of them close-ups where you go up somebody's nose. Um, you can do that. But, uh, <laughs> hey, that hair right there is sponsored by Christoffel's Incorporated out of Sioux Falls. <laughs> that is fake as fake can be. Looks Look at great, that. though. Look at it. It's it getting a, Right now it's late in the year and it's getting a red tint to it. Does it so, change? It does. You, no. It, like every... No, the sun does that to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, huh. but... <laughs> Look at that. So, now that we've gone to full I, full 4K there, it's like, wow, that's pretty I want to ask you a serious question about I'm, your I'm hair. I'm going to finish my thought, though. And, okay. then, and then Doug will also come in here, and he'll wrangle us so that we cut the production spots that we need to cut for thank you sponsors uh, that help partner the show. And we can we can record the items that go into the podcast and into the, the syndicated version, and we'll get all that done here in the next half hour or so. So that's what's going to happen now. Do you think anyone cares about that now that you've mentioned your hair? No one cares no, about it. No, I know. It, it, but as soon as you said that, nobody thought any more about the show. And they just Well, he was so hair. close on my head. Uh-huh. I had I felt like I had to say something because yeah. I maybe I'm self-conscious about somebody seeing the the blend line or something. Um I do want to ask a serious question. You uh, you said that and now you're yeah. going back to it. So and, I I, and I'm not being facetious at all. You we cuz we talked about it on the air when you got it. How oh, yeah. is it going for you now? You've had it for what a year? Uh, we, it was a COVID, it was a COVID thing. Okay. Um, and, uh, Sarah, I hope you're listening to this. If not, we're going to get you a copy, Mm -hmm. but it was a COVID thing. And we had consulted with Christoffel's, uh, hair restoration people. I do not get sponsored by them. I asked them and they should, but they don't. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I had consulted with them about 10 years ago and yeah, Russ is right in on it now. But when I consulted with them, it was just, I thought I had too much hair. It was still enough there that I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, going to try something yet. But we had a we had a COVID night. It was pre Easter. Um, I knew one of my obligations for Easter holiday wasn't going to happen, which was well, actually, I have two of them, which is Living Last Supper, and also I'm the MC for the prayer breakfast uh, in Sioux Falls. Uh, where there's about 1,200 people there, and I MC the event for Mayor's. Well, it used to be called the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast, now Sioux Falls Prayer Breakfast. But I knew that those events weren't happening. So one night, and we were having a little wine and with dinner and and. Uh, about 11.30, I asked my daughter and my wife to shave my head. And they didn't want to, but I said they had to. Uh-huh. And so I leaned over the sink in the bathroom, and they shaved my head. Yeah. And uh, it was just before Easter, and we got done. And everybody in the family unilaterally agreed that I am not to be allowed to be bald yet. That it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. It <laughs> Stop wasn't messing with that one now. It Ross. wasn't good. I took it off auto, so it, it was, couldn't. It wasn't good, and I, I still got full control. Over I it. still feel like I'm 20 years old, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna give it a little while to look like I'm 20 years old, or at least 40. And so, yeah, I have an alien head. The back ends, you know, just kind of got, and I got bumps, and we just weren't happy with the bald look. Couldn't pull it off. I think uh, I think you went too far right away. As someone who has had to adjust over the years I, gradually. I, not- I noticed. Yeah. Uh, I, I think what you did was 
from the time you realized you were going bald till you shaved your head was too short of a time. You didn't give yourself time to acclimate. Yeah. So, yeah. So we went in and, and got the consultation and tried for, oh, about five, six months to do the full glue-on situation. And I got a sweaty head. And for <laughs> me, for whatever reason, I'm one of few that they couldn't get the glues. We tried a lot of different things, a lot of different pieces, as we call them. And we couldn't get the glues to stay. After about a week, it was gooey and stinky, and I would have to uh, sleep carefully so it didn't like slide around. It was miserable. And so after that, we decided to give up on that plan, and now it is something that I apply every day. And okay. um, I can scratch my head. I can, I can uh, restyle it. I can take it off on a weekend if I want and just put a hat on. And, uh, kind of and that was it. And uh, and my question was completely serious because yeah you at first you were you were the trying big, to figure it out the biggest and, thrill is scratching my head yeah it was oh but I couldn't scratch my head before and then when I'd go in and get that appointment where they take it off and clean my head and then put uh-huh. the new one on uh, when when she would scratch my head down there it was like this is the best shampoo ever get um, brush and yeah, just just keep scratching my head because this is the best shampoo ever so this okay. is the weirdest car show. Ever, but I'm a host, and right. some people might be interested. I think everybody's people fascinated. usually when you start talking about the hair thing, they they're like, "Oh, so it's Russ that has the fake hair." Yeah. Well, yeah, it comes no. back to Russ all the time. Look but at that. that. That's look at get that remote from him yeah. and zoom in on He's that get, stuff. Look, that's stupid. The, the, we had a neighbor that was a weatherman in Sioux Falls, and everybody said he had fake hair, and he didn't. But they just assumed he did just because of the look way it that. was always. Are we are we zooming in on Russ now? Oh, me? Yeah. yeah, yeah look, look at that. That's all real. That is. It's like how a, great would it be if he said right now? If he said, "I have to tell you guys, I did the same thing ten years ago." Yeah. No, I I I didn't. That's uh That's. That's, oh, hey, the camera do zoom like that. Look at that. Yeah, that's, no, that's real. That's real. It's that's real some, gray. You can tell because mine gets grayer every, every but year. But how often do you have to get a haircut? Because this stuff grows like once a week, about, right? You no, know, about three weeks it's overdue. Oh, I mean, it, it grows so fast. It's like, cha-cha-cha-cha. Yep. <laughs> we were so jealous. Yeah, it's, I, I'm not, a, that's dumb. And then he's got that good looking salt and pepper look. And I'm it's, struggling right now. It's going to be white pretty quick. The sides of mine are graying up really quick. But my blend line on the back is still good. The weird thing about uh, here, Hill, the weird thing about you and your hair was when you had the dark hair on top, people would go, "Oh, it looks it looks like you can tell." But you had that when your hair, your gray on the sides and your dark on top was actually what your hair looked like too. Yeah, You're, except it was pretty. I see pictures now when our kids are growing. I'm like, "Oh gosh, that was getting thin." And you were the first one to tell me I was going bald. Yeah, sorry on about the that. air. I didn't mean to. Yeah. I thought you knew. Yeah. But I'm okay with it. If when the day comes where I don't want to spend this money anymore or whatever, I'm I'm still me. But I just it's right now I'm hey, I can do it. I'm doing it. It's he'll, fun. He'll have that Vin Diesel look over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I also knew we were going on video. That was in the back of your mind. Yeah. Oh yes, it was. Yeah. And I I wanted to have hair when we went on video. <laughs> we could probably get a photoshopped it in. They, they could do about anything on mm-hmm. video now. Make you like a Poo emoji. That could be your face. So here's what we want to do with this. This conversation <laughs> was to a small audience right now live. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what the, where, Where's the stream at right now? I haven't looked at the comments in a while. Uh, where's the stream at right staying? now? Are they on there still? Yeah. yeah. They're still, yeah. Oh, what do you got? I, hold, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> no. Yeah, so, but I'm just, are, we, are we talking to like 20 people right now? I don't know. 40? Well, they'll, wa- they'll be watching this down the road. Yeah, but this is, but I get some I crazy to, comments down the road. Make this go viral. <laughs> and then bring people to the channel. I will sacrifice my vanity for the good of the video feed. I, I, I'm more than willing to sacrifice my vanity to have this baby fly off the charts. All right. Well, there, we shaved Chris's head at the beginning of this to try to get the promotion, and look what happened. Yeah. We didn't. Just we didn't get a off. million viewers. Mm-hmm. It just, and he decided to go with it. So share this if you're watching, saying this is weird. Look how weird these oh, guys are. Sure. Sometimes weird is what wins. That's true. That's definitely true. You know, why be normal? Everything else is, you know, just, that's what I told my kids all the time. You got to stand out. Why be normal? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you, that seems like bad advice for your kids. Oh, no, not I at mean, all. You got to. Everybody hey, we, else is doing something. You got to stand up and raise your hand. We need some comments, too. We've got a new, the, the radio show car we've had for about four years now is a Camaro SS, but our old one. 
our our Monte oh, Carlo. Oh, I looked at that oh, the other yeah. day. We got to do something with that. So it's not registered anymore. We let it expire I just a couple should, weeks ago. I think ago. we should blow it up or run it into something. We need to we need to do something, and you need to tell us what we need to do. And we're going to put it on YouTube. Should we like put a helmet on and run it into a wall and show you what happens when airbags go off? Should we? tie it down to our burnout pit and floor it and set the cruise and get out and see how long the car will yeah, go. It's probably safer. You know, run the tires till they <laughs> blow up and, and the end, then the, and let it go how right down on hook, the wheels. How about if we hook something to both ends of it and see if it'll actually come apart where it was welded together? It probably would. With the rust, it probably but would. But we want that engine to run. So I was thinking maybe like chain down to the burnout pit yeah, and just gotta, let it run till the, the tires are gone. The engine runs good yet, doesn't it? Yeah, the engine and trans are Can I sell it? it going. Is there any way? Nah, it's not sellable, but oh. it's... I know the trans isn't. It, because it needs... The head gaskets are starting to leak a little. The intake okay. gaskets are starting to leak. The trans... Look at me looking for the dollar. Going, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we would have pulled it the other day because we had a car that needed one of those. But yeah, I'm thinking we should do something and maybe set it, it to, on fire. I want it to fly through the air, either off a cliff or launched somehow. Could we pick it up and drop it? Sure. Would yeah, that, that be would, good enough for you? Yeah, I don't know. Can we swing it and drop it? The Devil's Gulch is in Gerritsen, but I don't yeah. know how we get it out. Yeah, that's the <laughs> right. We could get it down yeah. there. Doesn't anybody just we not know sure how we get it out? Have a quarry on their land that we can just launch it off the side. We got to be able to get it out though. Yeah, we're going to be responsible for it yet. Yeah, that's a good. It's got our name all over it. it we kind of <laughs> can't quite leave it. <laughs> So we put it in there and set it on fire, and then there was no evidence left. Oh, no. <laughs> See, I told you this was worth yeah, you were staying right. on for. You were right. Yeah, absolutely. Most cars, they don't let burn to the ground. They get them put out before they're too far. So it's kind of amazing to see what happens to a car when it's completely burned. So. I have a new fire pit. I mean, I, mm-hmm. we say smokeless. Thing. We have to, it's a smokeless fire pit. I don't think the car would fit on there. No, I don't think I so. I think we need to wreck the car and then burn it. Right. Yeah, yeah. That way we get both things We get two out of things. It. Yeah. I like the burnout idea. I like the. I could hook it up. We'd have it doing a burnout. I could blow the airbags while it's doing a burnout. Have a small fuel leak so we could wait and see how long before it catches on fire and starts Uh burning. Yeah. Tires are smoking on the bare on the bare wheels. We got a lot of good friends in the Gerritsen Volunteer Fire Department, so we could arrange some safety precautions and for for this. Yeah, I think. Well, that burnout that burnout pit is fifty feet away from a hundred feet away from anything combustible, so we could just let her go. Just let them know that we're going to burn it so they don't. I say. That we, is the city limits. After you close, we drift in your parking lot with it. and It's a front-wheel drive. It's not well, as then, fun. Then my car. <laughs> oh, the rear suspension is ready to fall out of it. That's why it's not on the road. Yeah. It, it would not, when you, you drifted, it would rip. It, <laughs> it, 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 the wheels drifted. would be over here and the car would be over here, I think. And you got to do it in reverse. <laughs> You gotta be backing up to drift in that front wheel. Yeah, all right, I'm, 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 I'm done. I, you right. guys do what you want if you want to keep talking. I'm done. Right. I, I got my thrill. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us on the stream. Uh, congratulations on the bonus stream. This was a. Uh, this is not spread the year regular. Share this around. Oh, yeah. See, these guys are fun. <laughs> That's going to do it for this hour of the Under the Hood Show. Until next time, you can find us at underthehoodshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and our Facebook page and all the places you can find the Under the Hood Show. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Under the Hood Show. With Russ Evans, this is Shannon Nordstrom thanking you for tuning into the Nordstrom's Under the Hood Show. Have a great day and remember, PTLA. The opinions heard on this program, based on the many years of experience of Russ and Shannon, are offered for entertainment value only and as a guide to your repair needs. No claim to repair or cause is given or implied. Always consult with your own certified technician and follow all safety procedures before attempting any repair. To be a part of the show, call 866-594-4150. Find out more by visiting underthehoodshow.com. Under the Hood is produced by Prairie House Productions. All content is the property of Nordstrom's Automotive Incorporated and may not be used without our permission. Copyright Nordstrom's Automotive, Inc.